In order to use jQuery, you'll need to add it into your project. There's two different ways in which you can incorporate jQuery into your project. You can either locally host the jQuery files, or you can point to the jQuery files that are being hosted on a CDN. Let me show you how you can do this using both of the methods. The first thing that you'll need to do in order to incorporate jQuery into your project are to get jQuery. You can go ahead and get jQuery by going to jQuery.com. The jQuery.com website has all sorts of information in regards to jQuery. It not only will let you download jQuery or point to a CDN, but it's also going to give you information about the jQuery project. In addition, it has robust documentation so that you'll be able to find out more information about jQuery. For right now, we are simply going to get jQuery incorporated into our project. To do that, I'm going to click the Download jQuery. This will allow me to download the most current version. If you click on this, it's going to take you to the jQuery.com download page. On this page, it's going to give you a bunch of information about how you can incorporate jQuery into your project. If you look right here, it's going to allow you to download a compressed version of jQuery or an uncompressed version jQuery has these two versions. The uncompressed version is best suited for development or debugging, while the minified or compressed version is recommended for production because it saves bandwidth and improves performance due to its smaller file size. We will primarily be using the compressed version, but if you ever want to know what is in the file, the uncompressed version offers the exact same functionality but the file is not minified, which means compressed, so that the file is actually more readable. If you click on either of these links, it will actually show you what the jQuery looks like. So you can see when I click on the compressed version, this pretty much looks like a bunch of gibberish. The computer can easily understand this, although it's going to be very difficult for us to understand. If I click the back button and I click on the uncompressed version, you'll see that this file is much easier to read. Even if you don't know anything about JavaScript, there are comments, there's indentation, there's line breaks, there's white space. It makes it easier for a person to actually read. I'm going to go back and we'll go click on the link for the compressed version once again, and then I'm simply going to save this file. So I'll go to file and I'll just go ahead and click save page as. You will need to navigate into the location where you want to save your file. I'll be saving this particular file in my 1502 folder. Now I like to make a separate folder for my JavaScript. So I'm going to make a new folder and I'm just going to call this scripts. I will save the jQuery 3.6.0.min.js in the scripts folder. I'll go ahead and click save. And now I've downloaded the jQuery library. At this point, I can close this page. I no longer need it anymore. We'll be adding the jQuery to this basic web page that I've created. So let me show you what this looks like. Here is my index page, and it simply just has an H1 element on the page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to link to some basic CSS. I have a reset file as well as a style.css. Let's just go ahead and link to those. This is not necessary in order for you to use jQuery, but it is obviously very common that you will be using CSS when you work with JavaScript. So I'm just going to go ahead and specify these. If I save now and I refresh, you can see that the font has changed slightly on my page. If we look at my custom CSS, I don't have very much going on, but I have styled a few properties on the body and in regards to the H1. Let's go back to the index page. Now I'm ready to incorporate my script file, which remember is being stored inside the scripts folder. I will go ahead and I'll use a script tag to add this into my project. The script element has both an opening and closing tag. What you're going to do is you're going to place the link inside of the opening script tag. So I'm going to use the SRC attribute. I'll say equal and then I need to point to this particular script. So I made a folder called scripts and the file that I'm going to be using is called jQuery 
3.6.0.min.js. And that is really all I need to do. It is worth noting that sometimes you may find a linked script file that contains the type attribute and sets the value to text forward slash JavaScript. This was necessary pre HTML5, but in HTML5, it is no longer required. If you end up having this attribute here, it certainly doesn't hurt anything, but it is no longer necessary in order for your script to work correctly. So because I'm primarily going to be targeting modern browsers, I'm just going to get rid of this. If you are trying to target older browsers, it's probably worth adding this attribute into your document. Now I have the jQuery incorporated into my project. If I save my page and we refresh, we will see no change. All we're doing is we're simply pointing to that jQuery file so that now we can take advantage and use jQuery. It is important that when you add the jQuery script, you put it before your personal scripts. So it kind of works the same way as our CSS, where we need to load the reset file, or if I was using Google Fonts, the Google Font files before I used my personal CSS. Here's my script file. If I'm gonna make my own custom script, and there's a number of ways that we can do this, which we'll be looking at in future videos, I would need to make sure they come after this particular file. So this is method one, locally hosting the jQuery library. The other method that we have is we can point to jQuery via a CDN. If we scroll down a little bit on this page, you will find information about using jQuery with a CDN. CDNs can sometimes offer performance benefit by reducing the load time because they're hosting jQuery on multiple servers that are spread across the globe when the user requests a file, it'll be served from the server nearest to them. Since many, many websites use jQuery, there's a good chance that the visitor has already loaded the jQuery from that particular CDN and it's been cached on their computer. Therefore, you don't have to wait for them to actually load it. jQuery offers several suggestions as where you can get the jQuery CDN file. I generally use Google, but any of these would be a good option. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the link for Google, which is actually going to take me to the Google hosted library webpage. On this page, Google actually hosts all sorts of libraries. So we're interested in jQuery and it took me right to this particular area. We want to be using the newest version of jQuery, which is the 3.6.0. And you can see that it provides me with some HTML code. I'll copy that before I leave here. It is worth noting that you can also link to older versions of jQuery. And you might be wondering, why would I want to use an older version of jQuery? Well, once we get into plugins, some of the plugins are not always compatible with the newest version. If you had a particular plugin that you wanted or needed to use on a project, you might have to go down a couple versions on the library in order for the plugin to work correctly. So in this way, you can actually access any of these older versions of jQuery if you need to. But for our purposes, we're just gonna use the newest one. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna comment out this locally hosted script, and then I'll just paste in the CDN version of the script. This really looks very similar to my own script that I used earlier. The only difference is the source value is pointing out to the web and accessing the jQuery.min file from Google. So now you understand two ways in which you can incorporate jQuery into your project. Let me just show you quickly how we can put jQuery to use so that we can test and make sure that jQuery is working. I'm going to do something very simple, and all I'm going to do is change the color of my header. Now, this is something that we could very easily do with CSS, but for right now, I'm just gonna demo this using jQuery so that you can get an idea of how we can actually use jQuery. I'm gonna go ahead and make another script tag. It is worth noting that I load the jQuery library first, and then I make my own custom script tag, and then what we need to do in order to use jQuery is we're going to go ahead and we're going to find out if the page has been loaded. We do that 
by loading something called the document ready function. So I'm going to put dollar sign and in parentheses I'll write document. Then I'm going to put dot ready. Then I'll open parentheses and I'll write function. I'll put open close parentheses and a curly brace. I'm going to hit a return and inside of the curly brace is where we write our jQuery code. Once again, I'm going to use the dollar sign, which is the method in which we select items using jQuery inside of parentheses, inside of quotes. I need to specify what it is that I'm selecting. In this case, I am selecting the H1 and then I'm going to pass on a particular method. We'll be using the CSS method. So I'm going to go ahead and put dot CSS once again in parentheses inside of quotes. I'm going to write the property that I want to affect, which in this case is color. And then I will write a comma and then I'm going to put quote again. And then we'll go ahead and we'll specify a hex value. And that is it. We will terminate the statement with a semicolon, similar to how we terminate statements in CSS. And I'll save. So what's happening here is we're going to perform a simple jQuery operation which will change the color of our H1 element. I'm using the jQuery selector of H1 and the CSS method, and I'm going to be affecting the color property and setting a value to it. The method will run when the document is ready, which is going to be determined by the ready event. We're going to learn more about the jQuery selectors, events, and methods in upcoming videos, but let's just save this and let me show you what happens on my web page. When I refresh my web page, you'll notice that the H1 now changes to be blue. So we know that jQuery is working. If I comment out the CDN version of jQuery and uncomment out my own custom link to jQuery and save the page, the page will again look identical because it is reaching the jQuery. If we had no link to jQuery, so if I comment out both of these and we save and refresh, you'll see that the text is no longer blue. It's going to revert to being black. So now you know how simple it is to add jQuery into your file. The next thing that we'll need to do is just learn how to harness the power of jQuery and understand some of the syntax.